Jackson Heights, a neighborhood in Queens known for its diverse culture, home to many people with different backgrounds. It's an empty plain, now a community filled with business stores and restaurants, and the meaning by people from South America, Asia, and India. How did Jackson Heights became this way? Let's start from the beginning. In the early 1900s, Jackson Heights was just a large plain. Only a small populated area located between Corona and Astoria. Around this time, New York was facing a housing shortage and uncontrolled expansion of urban areas. The land was bought by Edward A. McDougall, the owner of Queens Corporation. McDougall named the land Jackson Heights after John C. Jackson, one of the descendants who originated from Queens. Jackson Heights is not known for its elevation. Heights gave others the idea that Jackson Heights was an exclusive high-class neighborhood, similar to Brooklyn Heights. This will encourage people to move into the neighborhood. However, transportation to get to Jackson Heights were limited. Today, we could take a five minute walk to the nearest train station, heading to Queens, or order a taxi on your phone. Back then, the only transportation to Jackson Heights was a coach bus or a ferry that would travel from Manhattan or the Brooklyn Bridge. The Flushing Line was not introduced until 1916. Sounds like a journey to get to one neighborhood. Originally, Jackson Heights was developed for the middle and upper class. It was a way for people to escape crowded areas like Manhattan. Queensboro Corporation started making apartments building exclusive to white upperclassmen. The apartment included a garden, fireplace, and built-in bathtubs. Apartments were designed on a popular style from Germany. Colonial Revival. Queen Borough Corporation also divided the land into blocks, adding streets, sidewalks, and sewage lines. Around 1922, the Queen Borough Corporation was starting to commercialize their apartments through various media in hopes of having people buying the apartments. In 1928, Walnut Jackson Heights Landmark was built 82nd Street, Jackson Heights. Developing a gateway for neighborhood for commercial traffic from 82nd Street. Being able to take the train from Jackson Heights to East Elmhurst. Greenboro Corporation also made more apartments on 37th Street Avenue and 80th Street, charging them higher rent than other areas, making Jackson Heights difficult to live in. After the 1940s, Jackson Heights became more diverse with the help of new apartments and new transportation. There were less restrictions for living in Jackson Heights, making it easier for people from different backgrounds to move in, starting with the Jewish people and later people from the Latin American countries, such as Colombia, bringing their families to Jackson Heights around the 1950s. And with time, Indian family would move to Jackson Heights in the early 1960s. In the 1970s, Jackson Heights crime spiked. Drugs were sold on the streets and gang territory being fought over every corner. The neighborhood was clouded by violence. Gangs and organizations occupying abandoned stores and warehouses as their hideouts. The rise of crime impacted neighborhoods, causing real estate vacancy to rise in the 1980s, forcing the neighborhood to lower the cost of houses and apartments. The crime would last until the late 1990s. In the 2000s, Jackson Heights crime decreased. 
Now it's a destination for middle class families and business workers. Recent residents would move to Jackson Heights for the architecture buildings and cultural diversity. Jackson Heights history is outstanding. Starting as a plain area to later go through several changes in the century. With industrialization being a place to escape overcrowded areas like Manhattan, dealing with crime for two decades. Jackson Heights neighborhood and residents overcame a lot of obstacles that seemed impossible. However, they overcame every obstacle. Jackson Heights is a perfect example of working with others to change the community for the better.